So hello and welcome to the second series of High Street Histories. In this series, the focus is on the south side of Lowestoft in our time-travelling guided tour of our town's historic streets, houses and shops. I'm Dean Parkin. Hello again, and I'm Ivan Bunn. We're south of the bridge uh, today, Ivan, aren't we? We're pitched up in Waterloo Road at this uh, restaurant. Yes, this is the um, Well, 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 as it's called, been a restaurant for uh, many decades. But we know from the history of this building, way back when, it was actually established um, in the second half of the 19th century as what were euphemistically known as slipper baths. Okay, and we've actually got a picture, haven't we, of it in, we in go, its yeah, early so beginnings? If we go back here to the 1870s, in Waterloo Road, although back in the day when this was taken, this was known as Wellington Road, uh, the slipper baths, as would be uh, this very low building, and all of the water for the baths was seawater, and it was actually brought in in casks um, by cart. Um, every time there was a high tide and the people of Lower Staff could either have it delivered to their home or they could have a bath here in this low building. So it actually feels quite odd now, doesn't it, that they were public baths, but it's because mm. there wasn't running water in houses in the no, same there way, wasn't. was there? No, correct, yeah. The super baths almost looked like a temporary building compared to the rather impressive next-door neighbours. Yes, they certainly do. It's, there is an air of... Um, Temporiness is that such a word? <laughs> right. And then round the corner is his Victoria Terrace. These are all grade two listed buildings and very, very attractive. The architect is thought to have been John Loth Clements, who okay. pops up from time to time yep. on both sides of the bridge in Lower Staff with his architectural heritage. These would have been houses, would they? Would they were probably like many of the buildings here that went up in the second half of the 19th century. They were high-class upmarket lodging houses okay. for the great and the good that would come um, to the ever-expanding seaside resort called Kirkley. And uh, in this later view, from around 1905 of Wellington Road, that would become Waterloo Road, you can see the Super Bass building looks like it's had a new front put on, a bit of yeah. redevelopment. The baths themselves were um, taken over in June 1883 by a local, we can only call him an entrepreneur, yeah. Um, his name was Thomas Leggett, and in 1893 he applied to the Embryonic Town Council to have water pumped directly from the sea, and uh, he got the permission, he had the pipes laid, and from thence on every high tide he could pump water straight into his baths. Because that was a big selling point at that time, wasn't it? Yes. Because it was like health-giving properties of the sea, wasn't it? Yeah. So although today it's believed that the water came from a, a well, hence the present name, well, 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 right. the historical evidence is beyond doubt that the water was certainly by the 1890s being pumped in every high tide of the sea. It's Mr. Leg advertisements in the Lowestoft Journal played on the fact that lots of visitors from elsewhere in the country weren't very happy about going into the sea for bathing. And so he advertised this as to people who were nervous of sea bathing. Now, Mr. Leggett was also responsible for the Kirkley swimming baths, which were on London Road South, That's wasn't he? That's correct, yeah. yeah. They were opened by the Mayor of Lowestoft in July 1896, and they were built for and by Thomas Leggett. And they were actually connected. There's an opening that separated them from the backs of the buildings in Waterloo Road. And there was a first floor walkway that connected the slipper baths to the swimming baths. And all of this was a private enterprise by Mr. Leggett. If you look in this picture, you can see a garden with mature trees. And his house that stood behind those big elm trees was called the Elms. OK. Right. If we go inside in the late um, 1890s, um, this is the um, swimming pool on the inside. It was the tank, as they called the pool, um, was 90 feet long and 35 feet wide, 3 foot 6 deep at the shallow end, and six foot nine at the deep end. And the water was pumped in every tide. 
using presumably the same um, means as pump the water into the slipper baths. There was galleries round the outside and there was seating there for 400 um, people. Right. And initially the baths were for men only. Yeah. The swimming pool itself, because of the sea water bringing in a um, certain amount of grit, sand and debris, if we go to the, the empty pool, look at the floor, you can see in actual fact, Mr Leggett himself, he designed these special bricks full of holes, aerated bricks. Um, when the seawater went in, the grit and sand would settle through the bricks and so you didn't sort of have um, a gritty bottom to walk on. But of course, every so often, the pool had to be drained and all the grit had to be cleaned out. So this, presumably, is what these gentlemen here are doing and um, can't be certain that the gentleman in the bowler hat is yeah. Mr Leggett but as um, wearing a bowler hat back in the day was a sign of your importance yeah. uh, we're pretty certain it could be him and he's uh, not rolled up his sleeves he's, not he's, not actually, he's, sleeve, he's, he's no. watching isn't yeah. he yeah. Um, by 1923 the swimming baths had closed the baths themselves weren't removed. The tank, as they called it, a floor was laid over top of it. Okay. And it became a cinema known as the Grand Cinema yeah. that opened on the 23rd of August 1923 after the pool had closed. Yeah. This, this actually was a cinema for nearly 40 years, wasn't it? It was indeed, yes. yeah. 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 Then another fashion came along, didn't it? Because people had televisions... People stopped going to the cinema quite so much, didn't they? So the building then became a bingo yeah, hall. And that opened in 1963 and was known as the Grand Sporting Club. In 1990, it closed. And here we have a photograph of um, yeah. in the 1990s after its closure. Yeah. Yeah, and it stood this way for um, a number of years uh, until... Um, 2002 when a new community centre was built on the site known as the Kirkley Centre. It has changed and evolved in many ways but certainly today it is a focal point for uh, community activities not just in South Lowestoft and Kirkley but beyond. And it also it's still got the echo of the style of what was there before. That's right and um, I've also been told buried way beneath the Kirkley Centre is the remains of the original swimming pool. And those special bricks. Possibly yeah. with those special bricks. Yep. So in a century it's gone from being the Kirkley Swim and Bath to the Kirkley Centre. Yes. Mm-hmm.